Dr. Rob here and Dr. Randy, and we are the Happy Healthy Guys. How's everybody doing today? Dr. Randy, how are you doing over there? Doing fantastic, man. I uh, I was just talking earlier. I'd seen a picture of you on Facebook this morning, and um, man, you looked so young, so vibrant, not a wrinkle anywhere. Uh, like and then I lot. realized, um, well, I thought the SCT oil was working so good with you that you'd really turn back the clock like about 35 years. And then I realized, no, wait a second. That's your son, Jacob, dressed up like you. Was that you know, not hilarious? Oh, my goodness. He's such a handsome guy, looking good, looking like his daddy. I thought that was pretty cool, man. So, uh, uh, pretty Be Be Beverly was saying that when she was on her way to school with them, that he was actually dancing in the car like me. Not that I actually ever do that. I don't know where they got that from. Oh, but whatever. said he was dancing in the car, and all his mannerisms were exactly like me. And she goes, she said that she was, like, literally crying all the way to school. So if you guys, if I'm friends with you on Facebook and you want to actually see the, the actual younger version of me, just pop on the page and uh, you'll get a great laugh. My son, he's freaking hilarious. So your wife Beverly must have been completely annoyed if he was <laughs> acting like you. Yeah, I'm sure she was ready to boot him out of the car. <laughs> Couldn't get him to school fast enough. I'm sure <laughs> she raises, she, she's actually got three boys in the house of which I probably am the most immature of the three, guaranteed. Amen to that. Yeah, so pray so let's, that. yeah, definitely pray for Beverly, please. So let's talk about fat. So today we are talking about the three fat-burning fats revealed. And if we're going to start talking about fats, let's talk about some of the myths associated with fats because, you know what, not as much as there used to be, but I know at one time, we had this low fat craze and low fat era where everybody would tell you, do not eat fats because if you eat fat, it is going to make you fat or it will make you have heart disease or harden your arteries. And fat is just not a good thing. So it was, it was vilified, right? So yeah. when we talk about fats, let's talk about that myth right there. So are fats bad and um, why would they not be bad if they're not? Yeah, I mean, that myth really at this point has been debunked, but sometimes things that you've been told over and over and over, even though the studies clearly show that that's no longer true, it's hard to, to think or act differently when you believe something for so long. And, uh, and I was guilty of this, man. I hit that low fat, you know, cut all your fats out back in the early 90s. And, you know, I was uh, eliminating all fat from my diet. Little did I know back in the day, I was aging myself prematurely, setting up severe inflammation and causing a whole host of problems. So let's talk about that. The, the myth that fat makes you, I guess, fat or that it causes disease really is a myth. Um, it's specifically saturated fat. Um, saturated fats are probably some of the most important fats you can put into your body. I, know, I remember thinking before, that if a fat was liquid at room temperature, then it must be a healthy fat because those fats wouldn't clog the arteries. Did you ever think that, Dr. Rob? Yeah, absolutely. And everybody, everybody else thought that as well. I totally thought that. So that's where we thought like corn oil, for example, was good for yeah. you or yeah, vegetable oil. oil was good. Yeah, absolutely. Because they were, they, they were liquid. They were clear. They, it seemed reasonable. Those seem, they seem healthy. Um, and then the ones that were solid at room temperature, oh no, man, those are the ones that could clog your arteries because they're the saturated fats. And what's interesting is the, the average temperature of the body is about 98 degrees. So guess what happens to all fats when they're actually consumed? They're all liquid, right? So it's not whether they're liquid or they're not liquid. It's what do they do when they go into your body, all right? And this is the beauty of a saturated fat. Fats become a problem when they become damaged and they cause oxidative stress. And so what breaks down a fat is heat, light, and oxygen. That's what will produce those free radicals. So you've got, you know, we've talked about this. You've got the long chain fats, you've got the medium chain fats, and you've got the short chain fats. The shorter the chain, the most stable and resistive the fat is to heat, light, and oxygen. 
so you reduce oxidative stress on your body and you can heat these oils. And so saturated fats, guess what? They're the most stable under heat, light, and oxygen. So they're critical for cellular health, for gut health. They are the preferred source of fuel for your heart. So how could the most important source of fuel for your heart be a, be a saturated fat, yet say a saturated fat would cause heart disease or be unhealthy for you? Now, there's a difference between certain saturated fats, and we can talk about that. But the, general, the generality that saturated fat causes heart disease or that fat causes heart disease is just not true. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's just a myth because when you look at fats on their own, let's talk about the science, right? So science shows us that our body needs macronutrients. So that means that yeah. these nutrients are essential for life itself. And so those macronutrients being carbohydrates, right? Yes. You've got proteins and you have fats. In other right. words, our body has to have them in order to survive. So like yes. we just got a question from Will. He says, do y'all have an opinion um, or facts about saturated fats ultimately leading to Alzheimer's or dementia? Which is like Dr. Randy was just saying, we we're talking about these macronutrients. If our body has to have fats in there in order to be able to survive, then the answer to that question would be no, that doesn't lead to Alzheimer's or dementia because our brain and those problems are neurologic problems and our nerves require fat, right? We've got these cells that have this lipid bilayer, which literally is a fat bilayer. They're wrapped wow. in fats. So we have to have fats in order to be able to make sure that we're producing good, healthy cells. So as we talk about that, we'll talk about the issues, though, that we do have and what does make fats bad or bad fats for your body. But the reality, science tells us you absolutely have to have fats in order to be able to survive. And we'll talk about how these fats are involved with the burning of then more fat inside your body for energy as well. Well, and remember too, to, to answer Will, you know, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, really any chronic inflammatory disease has the hallmark of inflammation at the core of it. And so the problem with fats and Alzheimer's are the wrong type of fats which we'll talk about, but when you're getting way too much omega-6 and polyunsaturated fat, that is severe, has severe inflammation damage to your body and to your brain. But your brain can run beautifully off fat um, and do very, very well. In fact, you know, we talk about this all the time, running the brain off ketone bodies versus glucose. And remember, you will die without fat. You'll die without protein. You can live without any carbohydrate because your body can make whatever it needs from the fat or from the protein. So fats are essential to brain health. Plus the nervous system, those cells have to live a lot longer than general cells that can just break down, die, and be made brand new again in 90 days. Nerve tissue has to live longer. So you have to nourish the body with the good saturated and healthy fat to protect the nerve tissue, the myelin sheath, the brain, the spinal cord, that's essential for neurological health. Cool. So let's talk about the, what those best fats are. So now that we know that we got to have these fats, they're essential. They are macronutrients. Number one is grass-fed beef. Now that had been a myth as well. Don't eat meat because of the fat that they contain can actually cause high cholesterol or hardening of the arteries. But like we were talking about earlier, what is it that the research actually says about this type of fat? Yeah, so it's not necessarily the, the, the beef or the animal protein that's the problem. You know, eating too much animal protein is a problem. Eating too much of anything is a problem. But it's the right type of meat. That's, if you're looking at conventional meats in America, they don't even resemble what we ate that we've, that we've lived on for thousands of years, which were animals that were raised humanely in their natural state, grazing on natural grasses. So a lot of the animals we get now, they're fed corn and grain. They're pumped full of hormones and antibiotics. They're even fed genetically modified feed, which isn't even a real thing. It's like made in a laboratory. 
So they're being fed toxic, toxic foods that increase the amount of polyunsaturated and omega-6 fatty acids, which those type fats, Dr. Rob, they can't really even be metabolized for energy. They, they incorporate themselves into the cell membranes and into the mitochondrial membranes, which are the respiration centers of the cells. So they, call, they cause this cellular congestion, which literally clogs up your system, your arteries, your metabolism. You become sluggish. You get the brain fog. You get the inflammation. You get the pain. You get the arthritis. You age so much quicker. So it's not just, it's not saturated fat. It's the wrong type of fat you find in these animals and not to mention the, the Roundup that is sprayed on all of this feed that they're eating, the glyphosate, which is an endocrine disruptor and causes cancer. So I, I think what we're saying is don't overconsume anything, but if you're going to eat meat, grass-fed meat that's naturally raised is rich in tons of healthy fats, including even omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, absolutely. So then the beef would be, like we said, you've got to have fats. And so you've got long chain fats, you've got medium chain triglycerides or long chain triglycerides, medium chain triglycerides. And then you've also got short chain as well. We need all of them, right? So let's yes. talk about then about but what we're is out of balance with that, right? We're way too heavy on the long chain fats. It's a complete uh, out of balance situation where we're deficient in medium chain and severely deficient in the short chain. Which is where where MCT oil or coconut oil came along, right? Because we were deficient in the medium chains, right? So that came along at the right time because as people were starting to learn and start to figure out that we did need these fats, these good fats, yeah. then we had n the number two fat that we're talking about today being the medium chain triglycerides. An example of that would be coconut oil, for example or just MCT oil. So what is it that makes the MCT oil or the coconut oil so great in helping our bodies to be able to burn fat in a healthy type of fat for our body? Yeah, like we talked about those long chain fats, a lot of times those are hard to be utilized for energy or metabolized properly. But the, when you start shortening that chain, those medium chain, those are great energy fats, especially when you, when you start looking at the carbon chain, you start using that C6, that C8, that C10, um, and even the C12 to some level, although C12 is lauric acid, that's really considered more of a long chain fatty acid, not really a medium chain. So that's why too much coconut oil can throw the balance right back out if you're doing too much of it. But when you start using these medium chains, they can really, they're energy fat. So you don't really store these fats as fat. They can nourish the heart. In fact, they have the propensity to elicit ketone production in the liver. Now, this is important because from a, from a health perspective, your heart, research has shown, is about 20% more efficient burning ketone bodies versus burning totally. gluten. So it's a real efficient fat to help support the heart and nourish it, especially if you have compromised digestion. An interesting study showed, Dr. Rob, it was the PURE study, we've referenced it before, this study was published in the Lancet, which is the British Medical Journal, and it was done in 18 countries over a 10-year period, over 135,000 people. And what they were testing were the higher carbohydrate diets versus the higher fat diets and how that impacted disease and mortality rates and mm -hmm. stroke. Totally. Well, guess what they found? It was pretty sh shocking, not to us, but shocking to some of the uh, – the powers that be that the higher fat group had lower mortalities across the board and the highest saturated fat group had the lowest stroke. So there was an inverse correlation between how much saturated fat you would consume and the lowering of the stroke risk, which I thought was pretty interesting. So the medium chains can help support heart health, reduced inflammation, and increase energy without being stored as fat or disrupting uh, or causing that cellular congestion. Now that's that's good stuff. So all the reason why fats are definitely important and they're not causing 
what's causing the, the, the heart disease or the hardening of the arteries. Like you said, there was an inverse relationship to that, right? And so it's just making sure that we're not getting the, the, the toxins that are in the, in the fats. We're not getting things that are processed, right? So we're not getting that cellular congestion that ends up leading to more inflammation. And so what all the studies were showing, it's the inflammation that's causing the problem. And inflammation can come from a lot of other things, like all the things that say that they're low fat are always going to be high sugar. So if it's got low fat and high yeah. sugar, guess what? That extra sugar leads to inflammation, which also then leads to jacking your cholesterol levels up as well, right? Your free floating triglycerides going on around in the bloodstream. And so those are all the things that lead to all the bad stuff. So it's not doing the low fat stuff because it has high sugar. And even though we see this all over the place that's saying to eat more healthy fats, Dr. Randy, it's still one of those things though. I can't tell you how many times I'm at a restaurant or even like in a coffee shop and I'll listen to people as they're ordering their drinks and people that are trying to make health conscious decisions, which I think is fantastic because they're being intentional about it, but they'll yeah. say, Hey, give me the, the coffee. And then they always ask, do you want, do you want whole milk or do you want low fat milk with that? And guess what? Right. Most people always choose the low fat milk. Absolutely. Right. And to make it healthier your choice, fat, you replace it, like you said, with, sugar or more chemicals so you end up eating a lot more because fats create that satiation right when you feel full so you're not constantly wanting to snack all day you know so you you don't ever win by cutting out the fat now you want once again you want to eliminate the bad fats right but increasing good fats like we're talking about are are huge but it's still that that mindset of like oh my gosh i'm getting too much fat no you really need to be more concerned about eating too much processed food, sugar, and processed fats like your corn oil, soy, canola. I don't care if you expel or cold expel or press canola oil. It's still a rancid, toxic, inflammatory oil that causes cellular congestion and can lead to things which are all linked to inflammation like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, I mean, the list goes on and on. Avoid those fats, but increase the good fats. Absolutely. You got to, because I always giggle when I'm behind that person in line ordering, because yeah. they always get the, the low fat milk. And then they yeah. say, and then go ahead and sweeten that with two, two or three sweeten lows. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and then they order the, the brand muffin, right? Yeah, so know, they've right? got the low fat brand muffin. The low fat brand muffin. So then, now they've got the toxins in there, they've got the, uh, the, the, the wheat. Um, in there. So now they're spiking their insulin levels up and inflammation's through the roof, right? So yeah, 100%. It, it's just, it, you can't do that anymore. It's, it's, it's a myth that's got to go away. So we, we, it's okay. And it's critical to put those healthy fats in your body. So the longer chains you need them, um, start incorporating the medium chains. You need those too. But I, I believe there's a real deficiency, Dr. Abano, you and I both believe that yeah, most critical fatty acids you could put in your body, and people are not getting them. And so, what what is that? Do you want to go there yet? Or yeah, I think let's let's do it. Yeah. So as you guys know, we we talk a lot about your SCT oil or your short chain triglycerides. So you've got your long chain fatty acids. You've got your medium chains. The short chain triglycerides we really believe there's a huge deficient deficiency there. So we're, we're never saying eliminate everything and just take SCT oil. That would be one of the, the dumbest things you could ever do. It's all about balance. So just like the macronutrients, you need balance with carbs, proteins, and fats. You need to balance out your short chain, or excuse me, your fatty acids, the long, the mediums, and the short. We have a tendency to be heavy on the long chain fats, which is going to cause serious pro-inflammatory activity in your body. So a short chain fat, remember, it's completely stable under heat, light, and oxygen. So it's the most absorbable fat you can put into your body. It requires zero bile or pancreatic activity. So it's easy to digest, used uh, immediately for energy. It's going to drive fat burning lower glucose load, um, increase insulin sensitivity, 
and it's going to incorporate itself into the tissue cell. And it's remember, it's a preferred source of fuel for uh, the colon and the bowel and the gut. So your mitochondria need nourishment. They drive the energy in the body. And if your gut's not healthy, if your colon's not healthy, you're affecting your immune system. You're affecting how you absorb nutrients. Um, you're not going to be absorbing your fat-soluble uh, fat vitamins, your A, your D, your E, and your K. So you've got to have these short-chain fats in place. And if you're in that, trying to live in that keto or paleo world and move away from burning sugar to burning fat, this is the easiest way to do it because these basically give you instant ready ketone activity in a very absorbable way that no other oil can deliver. So I know, Dr. Rob, um, we were talking earlier about, you know, all the powerful things we've seen as we've started to incorporate the SCT. One of the things the research is showing, too, is that if you have an imbalance of long chain fats, which you probably do, by adding short chain fats, you can mitigate a lot of the pro-inflammatory problems. So what you're essentially doing is you're now bringing that back into balance so you're not tilted so far over in that inflammatory state and you're going to move it back to where your body is in an uh, anti-inflammatory state. The way you influence T cell activity, the immune system, the digestion, all that can come back into balance. But if you're not incorporating the short chains, um, you could be way out of balance and you don't even know it. Yeah, and, and, and an easy way to be able to see if you are out of balance is if you are doing your medium chains and your long chains and you're getting any kind of gut distress at all, like the bloating um, and diarrhea that comes along with that or even some constipation with that, that right there is a sign that you are definitely out of balance and you got to make sure that you incorporate those short chain triglycerides into your diet, which was exactly the way or the reason why we started with the SC2 oil, it was one of those things where it wasn't on our radar to produce another product. That's the last thing that we that we <laughs> wanted to do or needed to do, right, as far as our families go. But we did know, based on what it is that we learned while we were in Spain, while you had you had cancer and you were going through the heating, healing protocols with that, and my, my discs were blown out in my lower back and going through the inflammation and not being able to walk, it was the introduction into that healing process of those short chain triglycerides or yep. those short chain fats that allowed our bodies to be able to heal very quickly because it was what our body needed because once again, it's a macronutrient. Our bodies were out of balance. And the yep. side effect of reintroducing that even into, into my own diet personally was I lost 65 pounds, which was amazing, but it wasn't the weight that was creating the pain in my lower back. It was what it is that we've been talking about with the inflammation going on because within the first week of introducing this into my diet, the pain that I had been experiencing for months in my back was gone. And so the only thing that was changed was this right here, which is why we said, you know what, there's, there's got to be a product out there for us to be able to just get the straight short chain triglyceride. We looked everywhere, couldn't find it anywhere, it didn't exist. And yeah. that's why we were like, you know what? We got to make a product that is just the short chain triglyceride. And that's, I mean, if, if anything, it was for us first. And then, yeah. uh, and then, and then to be able to bring that to the public because we saw the benefits of that uh, first, first for ourselves. Yeah. Selfishly, it was for us. Let's, let's be honest. I can say it. We're selfish. We want to help <laughs> ourselves. Hey, my wife will tell you that. No problem. I know, but it, it, it is incredible, you know, with, with the short chain fats and what we've been seeing and, and all the testimonies we're getting and in our own lives and, and seeing what can happen. And, it, and it's not really, um, it's something that you would normally get in a healthy lifestyle. But in America, we've been so medicated. We've eaten so much processed food. We've been so steered in the wrong direction with all the different narratives that have been created about health that we really no longer can even um, create short chain fatty acids through just a normal digestive process because your body can make them. They're so critical to your health. Your body wants to make them. But if you have gut dysbiosis or that, that microbiome is out of balance, where you've got way too much bad bacteria versus good bacteria from years of antibiotic abuse or prescription medications or over the counters or processed foods or too much sugar, does any of that sound familiar? Your body can no longer take and ferment fiber to create these short chain fats. 
And then if you're not getting them in your diet, which there's almost a 95% chance you're not getting them because you're just, you don't, you're, you're too dependent on the long chain fats or the medium chains, then there's a real deficiency there. If your body can't make them, if you're not supporting and nourishing it externally, then that's how a deficiency can happen. So if you do have the arthritis, the joint pain, the brain fog, you don't feel your best, you don't have a strong metabolism, those are all, once again, warning signs that you're deficient in these vitally important short chain fats that are loaded with tons of nutrition, that are completely absorbable, and they're such great carrier oils because they get right into the tissue. You can drive so much nutrition deep into the tissue. In fact, this morning, I, uh, I pulled a Dr. Seth. I did my tablespoon of SCT oil with my four drops of essential lemon oil, and I, I did that this morning to start triggering leptin straight to the brain to start burning fat and giving me crazy energy. So that's how I started my day. And I can tell you, it gives you incredible energy. So whether you put it in your coffee, you take it raw therapeutically, just even just taking, um, you know, cooking with it, whatever. I'm telling you right now, the energy you get from it's crazy. So um, do I look like I'm famished, starved, or hungry right now? I do not because I feel great. One tablespoon this morning got the uh, metabolic fire burning. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we just, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Kat, yes, absolutely. Fats are fuel. Denise, thank you for watching as well. Larry Wayne, as always. Will, as always. If you guys have questions, obviously, always ask what your questions are. And so that's why we did this today is to be able to answer questions that people had about fats. If you like this information, Give us some thumbs up, some likes. Also, share this with your friends and family members, people that need to get this information as well. Give some hearts out there as well so that we know that the information that you guys are getting is useful and you're applying it. And just from a practical state, you know what? Here's what we want you to do today is we want you to start looking at what it is that you're putting into your body. Are you putting the macronutrient fat into your body? So are you, are you getting your grass-fed uh, meats? Are you getting your MCT oils? Are you getting your SCT oils or are you out of balance? And if you're out of balance, you got to make sure that you get your body in balance because when your body is in balance, now your body is working for you, not against you, and your body is healing. And then like we always say is now you are happy and healthy, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that's a huge thing because just because you're in ketosis or your strips tell you that you are and that you're burning fat it doesn't mean that you're healthy right you can manipulate numbers to create an outcome but real health happens when you're putting real foods in your body you're putting the right fats you've got the balance and that will always um, end up in a, in a great outcome with your health so don't manipulate the numbers put the right things in get the balance back add those fats like Dr. Rob said, start looking at what fats are going in your body or if you're even getting enough fat. There's a good chance you may not be getting enough fat. You're eating way too much protein and way too much carbohydrates. So I'm done. That's all for today. But I think it's critical to put those fats in. Fats are fuel, but really the right fats are the perfect fuel. Amen to that. So with that... Remember, like it, share it, share with your friends, your family members, because that really is truly our goal and our mission is to be able to make sure that we are creating happy, healthy people and the healthier and the happier people are, the better planet that we have. And that really is truly what our goal and our mission is. So thank you guys for watching. So on behalf of myself, Dr. Rob, Dr. Randy, you guys have an awesome, happy, healthy week. We'll talk to you guys next week.